Maple syrup. Delicious. Colorful. Beautiful colors in that. But you know, it's a lot of people call it liquid gold. I personally call it a pancake's best friend. But, how did we get this in the first place? How did we ever found out the existence of these pancakes? Or more importantly, maple syrup? Well, according to myth, a group of natives called Amerindians, Amerindians, as some people would call it, claim to have found this mysterious sap contained in maple trees. And they'd even taught the European settlers how to sap from these trees. They then called it mapel, which is Old English for maple. But enough about that. What do you say we get into a little science? Because maple is also very scientific, in case you haven't noticed. It can, also, it can be reused. If, you, if, if there's a mold on it, for example, if there's a mold on it, for example, then you can just take off the mold, reheat it, and it's good as new. Now, my name is Gene Brandon. I am uh, one of the owners. My father is the owner of this. Sugar House. Him and I have bought, bought a bunch of land together. Um, my children are seventh generation uh, sugar makers, so wow. we've been in this a while. Um, it's what we love to do. Um, we are dairy farmers as well. Our barn burnt back in uh, 1998, I guess it was, and we decided to go a lot more with sugar than we were before. Um, that's when we you know, tore the old sugar house down and did what we did here. Still expanding today. And I'll mm -hmm. show you some other stuff that we've done this summer. But uh, this is what we call our horsepower. Um, this is where the reverse osmosis is, which means this is where the sap gets sweet. It goes from your raw coming out of your tree, which is a you know one and a half percent sugar. So for every gallon of sap you have, only one and a half percent of that gallon of sap is sugar. The rest is water. So. Um, it's, so it's, when it comes out of the tree, it's sugary. It's, it tastes sugary. No, not well. A little bit. That much. I mean, it's. It's, it's water and it's got a little bit of sugar in it, a little bit, you know, 3%, that's a good sweet sap. That's from a, that's from a you know, probably an older hard maple. Uh -huh. um, it's probably where it came from. Um, nowadays, we don't have the big three, four foot maples anymore. Nowadays, they're all smaller, smaller trees, you know, we're talking a foot to two foot in diameter. Um, hard maple, a lot of soft, um, but for the most part, our our average for sweetness of our sap is probably one and a half percent sugar, probably. You know, I'm sure we have some trees. We have some old sugar 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 bushes where we have some big hard maples, but you know only that many for everything else we have. Um, so that so the, the, this is where the sap gets sweetened. So by by means of these three tanks here, um, all of our raw sap comes into tank one and it gets filtered. It goes through a sand filter there in the corner. Then it goes upstairs into the top of tank two. So all the sap in tank two is filtered. Then it goes through its process of being sweetened, you know, for the RO. So now it's going through another filtering process. So it's filtered twice. Then it goes into the reverse osmosis machine. And this machine is what separates the water, which will now be called permeate from the sugar in the sap, which will now be called concentrate. So if the boys want a real sweet, sweet sap, say 20% sugar, by, by means of high pressure pumps, okay, and membranes, that's what these are, okay, there's eight membranes per RO. So there's 24 membranes in this room. There's another one in a, in a separate room that's, that's got another eight. So there's 32 total membranes in here. Okay, and, and by meanings of high pressure pumps and by tightening, tightening the membrane, meaning allowing less, allowing less concentrate, allowing less sugar to come out and more water, that is how we sweeten 
the sap. So the water, so the sap, the, the raw sap, as after the filter, goes into the goes into the RO by means of pressure pumps, being pushed through the membranes. On one side of the membrane is your water, which is now called permeate. On the other side of your membrane, which is the inside probably, depending on how it works, is, is your concentrate. So if you're pushing a thousand gallons, right, you, you want to get just say this, just say 600 gallons of raw sap an hour, and you're asking for 20 percent, you're probably only going to get about 100, 100 gallons of concentrate, and your rest would be all water. So out of that 600 gallons of you know, raw sap, probably 500 of it is water, and 100 of it's 20 percent sap. You know, it, that's probably not 100 percent the the um, the way it should be. You know, maybe it's 700 of this and 100 of this, but for an average, let's just use 600 gallons an hour, and only 100 of that it, at 20 percent would be sap, would be boilable. Mm -hmm. The other stuff is water. And the water goes into tank three, or we have two other silos out in another room. So. So after your concentrate is out of your, your membranes, it's now upstairs, there's two other tanks upstairs. And so now the, the two tanks upstairs are full of concentrate, let's just say 20%. And then from there, we start the production of boiling. So I can, I'll show you how that works. I don't know if you have any other questions in here. We, I have some vacuum pumps. I, this, this is a new addition we just did this year. Ops of those tanks when we were downstairs. Right now we just have some water and we gotta get clean and stuff, so we're just um, still working on it. But we decided to go concrete for our next set of tanks. It's got a food grade lining, so everything's kosher and um, food grade in here. But the nice thing about the concrete tanks is on a warm day, they should be able to keep everything cooler mm -hmm. because there's, there's no sunlight on them um, and, and it's below the frost. So hopefully things will stay cool. Like last year, you know, we had tanks again outside, and you know, we were talking 70 degree sap. We had to throw a lot away because oh. you, you just can't deal with uh, temperatures that high with sap. We had our white tanks that you saw downstairs 15 years ago. We backfilled them, covered them with dirt, which was the ideal thing to be, but the frost uh, moved them in and out and it pushed them right into the sugar house. So we had to backfill them, I don't know, pull, pull the dirt away, push them back out of the sugar house, and we made a retaining wall around them. So. They, 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 that works good, but when you get you know 60, 70 degrees, those tanks heat up because they're you know sunlight's beating on them. This way here, the underground is concrete. The concrete's cool. Hopefully, the sap will stay stay cool for you know as long as it's in here. So now I'm bringing down a trader. Is now fed concentrate through this stainless line into a float box on this side. Now this float box is run off of a float, okay, and everything, all the sap that's moved through this rig is determined by your flow coming out of the evaporator. So if you're drawing off, if you're making a lot of syrup in an hour or a minute, whatever it may be, your flow of sap coming into this is going to be heavier, more, mm -hmm. than if you weren't to be boiling off much sap per hour or syrup per hour, and that is done by sweetness of your syrup, of your sap. If, if, if you're if you're having, if you're boiling a 10% sap versus a 20% sap, you're not going to be making as much syrup an hour as you would be 20% if it was 10% as you would be at 20% because it's taking you that much longer to boil. You got to evaporate that much more water off of your sap. Um, so float boxes and floats run off of height of sap, and obviously the faster the syrup comes out, the lower the sap is, the more demand for for sap is needed, so it raises the float. Uh, up and down, it fluctuates that way. So it, it first enters the steam pan um, right here, and all this is is a you know a, a pan full of tubes back and forth that are hot. And when the cold sap touches the hot tubes, it evaporates water away from the sap and you know, makes it steamy. Look like. And this is what the sap process looks like when it's all completed.
Well, here we are. The maple trees. This is where they go once, they're, once they've been tapped. As you can see, the blue lines there, that's, that's, the, that's the sap coming out of them. Now normally, it would be until, um, un until, the, end of, until the end of March when they would be tapped. And it's the beginning right now, so that's when most people do their tapping. As you can see, they, they come in all shapes and sizes, mostly sizes. It's kind of snowing right now, sorry about that. So, yeah, here we are. We finally did it. Maple trees, just like I promised I'd show you guys. Now when we head back to the house, we're gonna talk about a little history about these guys. Which maple syrup is right for your product, or for you? There we have Grade A Light Amber Maple Syrup. This smooth flavor is one of the most delicate of all maple syrup grades. Made earlier in the season during colder climates, this smooth maple flavor is ideal for maple cream and maple candies. Next we have Grade A Medium Amber. This syrup is slightly darker than the light amber and is known for its smooth maple flavor. This distinctive taste is produced mid-season when the temperatures start to warm. Its unique and subtle flavor is most often used for table syrup. And after that we have grade A dark amber maple syrup. As the days become warmer and longer in sugaring season, there is now a fully a fully bodied maple syrup grade. Both the color and the maple flavor are a bit stronger and more intense than the medium amber. This grade is popular for table syrups and as and is also ideal for general sweetening purposes. Its strong maple flavor also lends itself to meat, glazes, cooking recipes, and a top of waffles, pancakes, or oatmeal. And finally we have grade B dark grade B syrup. Grade B is made late in the season. It, the sugar content of the saps has dropped by now so it takes more gallons to sap to, of sap to make a gallon of syrup. Hence the darker color and stronger flavors. This versa versatile grade is great as a topping and for cooking. Its hearty flavor is great for both. And there are the different there's are only four of the twelve different grades of maple syrup that there are today. Vermont lawmakers have approved new guidelines that that will create one international standard for grading maple syrup, thereby eliminating the separate classification systems within the United States and Canada. The International Maple Syrup Institute believes these new maple grades will alleviate consumer confusion and provide country and provide continuity for export and markets. All Vermont maple syrup producers can still customize their labels for easy customer consumer identification, but will follow the new maple syrup grade changes now that they are approved. The new maple syrup grades are based on color and flavor profiles of pure maple syrup, divided into two primary groups.
And next we'll be talking about maple syrup candies. Oh man, that looks delicious. Oh, what? Sorry. Alright, so this is maple sugar candy. Crystallina nature has a distinct flavor and is made by taking the sap from the maple tree and boiling off the excess water to make a type of maple syrup. It is then poured into molds. Maple syrup can be processed into a wide variety of candy or confections, including graduated or molded maple sugar, molded soft sugar candy, maple cream, maple fondant, and jack wax or maple on snow. These confections are easy to make, delicious to eat, and make excellent gifts. The process of making maple confections is simple. Heat maple syrup to desired temperature and then cool it with or without stirring. Making maple confections requires little special equipment. A kitchen stove will provide you a steady, easily controlled heat source. A variety of spoons and pans are necessary as is a candy or thermometer with a temperature range of 200 to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. For some confections, a flat pan will be needed large enough for stirring or to function as water ice bath for rapid cooling the heated pan of syrup. Rubber candy molds will also will be required if candy or molded sugar is made. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Yeah. Here you are. Vermont fancy. We'll just see how fancy you really are. Just add a bit more, just so that way I get a nice good taste of what I'm dealing with here. Get out of here. Alright, here it goes. I'm in heaven. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I'm gonna have to think more of this later. That's the tastiest thing I've ever had. It's nice, it's hot, it's fluffy. Oh, right. 